Welcome back to this series on Greylog, and in this video we'll be taking a look at streams and message processing. Now before we start, if you haven't watched my videos on inputs and index sets, please check them out, especially if you're new to Greylog. That being said, inputs and index sets are pretty straightforward, as there's really only one way to use them. But in the middle here with streams and pipelines and message processing is where things get a little interesting, because the way a message flows through Greylog is actually configurable. If we navigate to System and Configurations and click on Message Processors, we see an ordered list. You can think of each one of these lines as blocks of code that gets run against the message as it flows through Greylog. So when a message comes in, it will hit number one here, AWS Instant Name Lookup. I'm not using AWS, so I have this disabled. I also have the next two disabled. GOIP Resolver I don't use and message filter chain has to do with extractors and static fields on the inputs. I believe these are going away, so I also have them disabled. Eventually, the message will hit the stream rule processor. That code will run against the message and then will be forwarded on to the pipeline processor and finally be passed along to the index set for storage. All I have enabled is the stream rule processor and the pipeline processor with the stream rules being above the pipeline processor. This order is important, and if you have a working Greylog installation, do not change this order or you will break all sorts of things. If you currently have pipeline rules above stream rules, that's fine, but some of the examples I show in this video might not work, but the concepts are still the same. The main thing to remember about this order is you can't use information from a message if it hasn't been inserted into the message yet. So let's take an example. If I have a pipeline rule that adds some additional key value pairs to a message, I then can't build a stream rule based on that information because when the message is flowing from this list top to bottom, it hasn't gotten to the pipeline rules yet to add the additional key value pairs. I can only build stream rules based on what is currently in the message and none of the stuff I have done in the pipeline rules is in the message yet. Once you really understand how streams and pipelines work, this message processing order is really going to be up to you, your use cases, and how you like doing things. I don't think there's a right or wrong way of doing this, hence why it's configurable. So for this video and all other videos in this series, they'll be in this order. And if they are in this order, the message flow will look something like this. We have inputs where we input our message into Greylog. From here, it will start flowing through the message processing configuration, hitting the stream rules first. Now, and an important concept to remember is that all messages will match the default stream. You can only remove messages from the default stream if they match another stream. Because of this, my message will hit the default stream and then be forwarded along to pipeline processing. I don't have any pipeline rules configured, so it won't match anything, and pretty much just bypass the pipeline module, and finally move along to the index set for storage. Okay, great, so why do we even need to create custom streams? Well, there are three main reasons, but largely it'll be up to your use cases and what you need to use Greylog for. The primary reason is this is how we treat messages differently in terms of storage or message retention. When we create a new stream, we connect it to an index set. So whatever messages we route into this stream, we will eventually store it in whatever index set is connected to this stream. Another reason is to segment your messages into more manageable workspaces. When we do searches in Greylog, we usually only care about a very specific set of data. Greylog can ingest all sorts of logs and messages, but very rarely do we need to search every single message in Greylog. If I'm making an authentication dashboard that only deals with authentication, I want a stream that only has authentication messages in it. This makes it easier for the server to search and create dashboards for authentication. Another reason is outputs. You can output whatever messages match this stream to another system outside of Greylog. So I have a perfect case here to create a new stream. We can actually import IP fix flow data into Greylog. This is traffic flow data that my firewall can export into Greylog. I want to treat these IPix flow messages differently in terms of storage, and I kind of want to segment them away from all my other messages in the Greylog. So this is a great reason to put these messages into a custom stream and index set. So let's create a custom stream for this. But before I do, I'm going to create a custom index set first because when we create a stream, we need to tell it what index set to save these messages to. You can share indexes between streams, but my personal policy is whenever I create a custom stream, I create a custom index set to go along with it. In this case, I absolutely want to create a custom index set because I want to control how long I store these IP fixed data without affecting any of my other log messages in Greylog. 
To create and manage streams, click the Streams tab. Click Create Stream. I'm going to enter a title, a description if you want. I'm going to link it to the index set I just created. I'm going to check this box, Remove Matches from Default Stream. If you don't check this box, this will store the message twice, once in the default index and then once in your IP fix index. So your storage requirements will essentially double if you don't check this box. Okay, click Create Stream. Okay, go ahead and start the stream. I have no idea why this doesn't start automatically, but in any case, make sure you start it because from personal experience, I've done a fair amount of troubleshooting only to realize I didn't start the stream. We can view messages in this stream by clicking the stream name. Now we don't have anything in here and we never will because we haven't told Greylog what messages to route into this stream yet. To route messages into streams, we have two options, stream rules and pipeline rules. We'll look at stream rules first. To create a stream rule, you find the stream you want and select more and manage rules. Click the add stream rule button. When a message enters the stream rule processor, it will be evaluated against all stream rules. So it's possible for a message to match multiple streams. You need to remember this because when you build stream rules, you need to be very specific. So let's look at a IP fix message to see what we can match on. Let's click on inputs and the IP fix input to open a message. We see here we have plenty of key value pairs to match on. So you might look at this and say, oh, the message key has the value IP fix in it. I'll just match on that. And that might work. However, being specific as possible is the goal here. And I personally couldn't guarantee that every single one of my log messages from all my other sources don't contain the word IP fix in it. Now you might say, okay, well I'll match on IP fix and one of these other keys. And if both of them match, well then surely this is an IP fix message. And I would probably say you're pretty close, but in my opinion, there's actually a better way. And that has to do with how we set up our inputs. I use inputs as the first method of classification. Generally speaking, all log messages that are formatted the same way will usually get a dedicated input. So if I have a firewall all by the same vendor and all the log messages from this firewall vendor look the same, I'll add an input specifically for this firewall. All my window machines, I'll build an input just for that. Maybe a certain model access point, all the logs of that model access point look a certain way, I will build an input just for that. So yes, you will have a lot of inputs, but you're already ahead of the game when it comes to identifying what this message is. Greylog adds additional key value pairs into each message when it arrives on an input. One of these key value pairs is the GL2 source input key and a unique value of this input. Now when I create a stream rule, I can say that any message with GL2 source input and this value match this stream. In fact, this is exactly what happens when you click messages on input. All it's doing is filtering across all your messages based on the GL2 source input and this value. If I set up all my streams like this, matching based on input, then it's pretty much impossible for my messages to match any other stream. I know for 100% the messages in this stream are the messages I expect. Now this is great, but there are cases where we wanna create a stream that has very specific data from multiple inputs. An example of this would be authentication. I want to have an authentication stream that has authentication messages from any input. This way I can store these authentication messages in an authentication index for a longer period of time. So in this case, I wouldn't use stream rules. I mean, yes, you could and they might work, but in my opinion, there's a better way. Remember I said we can route messages into stream via stream rules or pipeline rules. Now I haven't gone over pipeline rules yet, but for this discussion, pipelines are how we can do just about anything we want to the message. We can add, delete, extract our key value pairs in a message, and you will most likely have to create some pipeline rules for the authentication messages to extract key value pairs such as username, client IP, method of attempt. So if you have to create a pipeline rule anyway, you've already done the classification that this message is an authentication message. We are just adding one more function at the end of the pipeline rule that says route to stream authentication. Now, if you remember what I said in the beginning about how a message flows through Greylog, it will hit the stream rules processor before hitting the pipelines processor. But if you look at this diagram, somehow we're back into a stream on the other side of the pipeline rules. Well, what actually happens next is this message will actually flow back through the pipeline processor again a second time. But this time around, it won't match this authentication rule. 
Because when I build a pipeline rule, I have to attach it to a stream. So I simply don't have any pipeline rules that are attached to the authentication stream. So this second time through the pipeline processor, it will not match any rules and just simply be stored in the index set. Okay, that just about does it for streams. I'll be doing a video on pipelines next. Please bear with me. It'll probably take me at least a couple weeks to get that together. As always, thank you again for watching and hit like and subscribe. I don't think I've ever said that in any of my videos, but everyone says to say it and it will help your videos grow. So let's try it.